Welcome back to Curse of Tamarine on Castles and Castles. When we last left our heroes, they came into a surprisingly uh, expensive windfall, and we are going to be handling off stream uh, how they go about spending their, well, their very, very, very large uh, monetary boon. Until then, they've been able to receive a bit of magical healing as the spirits that watch over this area of Tamrian have blessed them and healed the wounds and the exhaustion that was falling upon them from their earlier battle. And they were able to purchase a few healing potions, supplies they would need for the road, and were able to make their way out. As they are leaving the walls and city of Coldheart, Rorer is asking them where they would like to go. So as I've said, we can either just head straight west into the forest. It will take us about a day or so in order to make it to the edge of the woods. We'll need to make sure that we are able to set down and make camp, or we'll have to push on into the night, which can get rather exhausting, especially considering we've all not had a chance to rest yet today. The other option would be to go through the kingdom's roads and settlements, staying in the nearby towns having a respite from the fog. I can go ahead and lead us through these fogs, being mostly safe throughout the day. You'll need to make sure that you keep your wits about you and not let the, uh, not let the whispers into your head during the course of our travel, but it depends on how quickly you want to be able to try to pursue these monsters. So what will it be? Every person you saved was within, was within less than a day, correct? Yeah, about. Once you enter the woods, it gets very difficult to recover anyone. So, so we go. So we go fast then. I think we go fast. Give them no time to recover, as we have. If we're trying to save people, and you've only saved people less than a day, then we have less than a day. We should go. We should go the quick way. Yeah, Agreed. So have no consequence, but. Those creatures are violation of the design and must be destroyed with all haste. To be sure. And then we make our way. Let's be off then. And as Eberwolf gathers your party, you can see that aside from the uh, various equipment that he was previously carrying, it's a short sword and a long bow that he carries on his person, he has a small pack that he appears to keep most of his belongings in when he's on the road. He also appears to have a rather large bag that he has tied around his waist, just hanging off uh, the backside of his right leg. Uh, but he has little else. It doesn't seem as though he has enough supplies in order to feed. And if you're going to be rescuing either the several dozen people that were captured this evening or the possibly more than a hundred that have been grabbed over the last month, provided that any of them have survived. Doesn't seem like he has anywhere near what would be necessary to keep them all, but he assures you that he is good to go, and unless there's anything that your group would like to do, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and proceed, making your way across the Eldarian Plains, making your way to the Tangrove Forest. Now that you've entered the fog, I need each of you to please make a wisdom saving throw for me. Let's do it. Wait, say, oh, sorry, saving throw, right? Okay. Yes, that is correct. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. I had one disadvantage, and it is now gone. Okay, very good. Yes, make sure that you keep track of all of your disadvantages and all of your advantages that you had been uh, receiving over the course of our adventures. And let's see here. Clack with a 14. That will save. And achieve with a 16, that will also save. Uh, however, Jackal and Farrakh, as you are making your way into the fog, all of you are having a difficult time seeing through, as right now, there is a magical light that Eberwolf has brought with him. As you make your way into the fog, you realize, even with your those of you that benefit from dark vision, are not able to pierce through the veil, as... 
during the daytime, it creates a light obscurement that makes it difficult to see what's around you. But at night, unless you are able to bring a magical light or flame to guide your way, nothing is able to pierce through the shadowy veil. And Can I burn an inspiration and reroll that wisdom save? Uh, yeah, certainly. Go ahead. Go ahead and burn <laughs> one of your inspiration and reroll that wisdom save. Better. That is much better. That will save you. Also, uh, any of you that have any companions, such as familiars, unless, if, unless they have been uh, bamped away into their pocket dimension, they will also need to make saves as they enter this area. Would the uh, light cantrip be of any help? Here? That is correct. The light cantrip will uh, okay. break through. Any of you who have magical light of any kind, uh, you can go ahead and activate such things, and it will help you see as you make your way through the murky veil. Uh... I can use magic. I, I do. Brain. I do. I do have that, but I'll, I'll use it. I use it for future ones. I already. Yeah. Gotcha. What were you saying, Ferret? Uh, I have the magical tinkering thing. I can view a tiny non-magical object with a magical property of your choice. A uh, five-foot radius light, among other things. Perfect. There you go. That will definitely make a magical light. And it looks as though Click is also suffering from the advantage issue. Let me go ahead and. Modify their sheet. There we go. So advantage toggle, whisper toggle, and auto roll damage and crit. Okay, very good. Now, uh, here's the thing. When it comes to when we roll with advantage, when we shouldn't be benefiting from it, we always take the first. So, uh, Clack, are you okay with Click having a four on their saving throw? I'm going to use my one inspiration and just not have to deal you with can that take, four. Yeah, you, you can take the 21 if you use your inspiration. So that's fine. Yeah, I'll uh, use Click my inspiration. Is able to. Uh, pass their check, and they are doing they are doing just fine. And we have Pooty, who has unless something changes, not having his, a not having a good time. Hootie's, Hootie further hates trauma, further trauma when, when you finally leave. Hooty is resistant <laughs> to even follow you here, but as soon as you yeah. get to the uh, hundred foot communication that would break between the two of you, it reluctantly follows and is pissed. When when you're making your way through the woods, it is just going from tree to tree. Uh, as you are moving through the plains in this area and just keeping, again, just keeping its distance from you, being yeah. very, very, very put off that it is here. And you can just hear every now and then when you look back, you just hear this resounding, ooh, ooh. <laughs> almost as if this, uh, this owl is grating its beak as it, as it hoots at you. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the blowfish doesn't need to make a save. It's just a construct homunculus, it's a, right? It's a construct. Uh, is it? But it should count as a. Is it immune to the fear effect? No, it's immune to uh, exhaustion and poison. Though. Okay, well then it will still need to roll because it seems that it does have a consciousness. If it's not, uh, it is a okay. construct. So. Well, actually, I guess it's, it's a construct. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's huh. chemical. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm, you know what? I'll take it back. I'm gonna go ahead and rule that. Yeah. Constructs aren't affected by the uh, by the murky yeah. veil, uh, which is a good thing. In any event. Uh, technically, Hootie's a fae. Uh, that that no. That's not. I'm that not gonna give that to you. They are a reasoning, right. thinking creature, and can definitely yeah. understand that what they're entering is bad news bears. That's fair. So that being said, everyone that failed their save, which at this time is Hootie, and the jackal. You have disadvantage on your perception checks, including passive perception, and any concentration checks that you might have. Uh, now, I am also sad to say that Hootie <laughs> uh, failed the roll by quite a margin, so I need you to roll one more 1d100 for me. Okay. It's going to black out again. 92. <laughs> so... <laughs> As you are making your way uh, through the plains, you realize that after a few moments, that annoying whoo sound just stops, and you don't see your owl anywhere. Huh. And you turn back to look, and you don't see it hopping from the nearby trees as it was. You don't see it flying over the tall grass. It, you don't see it at all. Hootie just is apparently gone. I'm going to dismiss him and then try to resummon him in front of me. Okay. You dismiss your owl, and upon reactivating your ability to resummon your owl, you are able to bring your spotted owl hootie back into existence before you, and with a resounding thump, it just 
plops down and falls at your feet, face first into the ground, as oh, he no. has been scared into unconsciousness. Oh. In that case, um... Yeah. Uh, Farrick will just pick him up again, sort of examine him, and then probably dismiss him back to the pocket dimension for now. Okay. <laughs> as you send Hootie away from this place, uh, back to what are hopefully uh, less horrible environments, you and your group make your way through this area. Now, you can travel for up to eight hours before you are going to have to start pushing on. And for every hour that you spend within the fog, when you don't have any sort of settlement to protect you from its effects, you have to continue avoiding the horrible eldritch whispers that creep into the edge of your perception and attempt to block you out from the rest of your travel. How long is your group going to be proceeding before they bed down for you? Right now, it's about the middle of the night. I would say probably about 12 p.m. or so when you make your way out. Uh. How far? How morning. far off are we? Uh, it is. It's going to take you about an entire uh, day's worth of travel, so eight hours okay. for you to reach the edge okay. of this wood. So, if you'd like, you can just walk all night, and then get to the edge of the woods, and then when daybreak uh, happens and things are a bit safer, the the sun should rise in about probably six or so hours, maybe seven from now, uh, and you can either bed down at that point or you can continue on just inside of the, uh, the woods before you. Take your, take your rest. Unless there's a chance of catching up to these creatures before we reach the woods, I don't see a much value in pushing on. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> agreed. At this point, Everwolf does have the trail, and as you are taking the direct path, mm. he knows exactly where these creatures have gone, <coughs> and he is able to inform your group that at this point, they are moving with great haste, and you believe that if you were able to keep up with them, you would be able, if you pushed on, you probably could catch them before you bed down to rest. Or, if you wanted to prepare yourselves, you could just go until you are ready to collapse for the, from your journey, and then take a rest. You are not certain if these creatures will be resting during their march, but they are living, breathing creatures, so they likely will need to take a break at some point. Yeah. I mean, if there's a chance we can catch them, then that seems like a worth a worth a shot. These creatures have to stop at some point. If they're active during the nighttime, it's likely they'll sleep during the day. We should do the same. Mm. Yeah. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Because I don't want to necessarily have to just make you all roll seven wisdom saves as you waste the next <laughs> eight hours moving through the plains of Kolzar within the Murky Vale, what I'm going to do instead is I would like you to go ahead and make a 1d100 check mark, please. And depending on the result of your 1d100 check, that's going to be determining how, how many, if any, saves you'll need to make as you make your way through the wood. Uh, does this apply? Does the disadvantage apply to this that I got earlier? No, your disadvantage won't apply. Okay. Okay. This is just asking how successful you Whoa. are as you make your Wait, I got a 1d0. You got a 1d0. Oh, that makes so much sense. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, one here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I got a 99. There you go. Hey. Okay. <laughs> what? Hopefully that's good. Hopefully that's a good thing for me. Yeesh. So or, amongst or, your... or this 99 wisdom saves. <laughs> So amongst your group, uh, I am going to need a total of two wisdom saves from Platt. So, Platt, if you could go ahead and just make two wisdom saving throws as you're making your way to the fog. Okay, wisdom. Black, I'd like to get one from you while this is happening. Yes. And you were successful. Achieve. While it has been very difficult and there has been what you can only assume are the aberrations of the fog that every now and then creep into the edge of your vision and your senses and attempt to drive you from your path. They, they whisper that following the echelon clock is only going to lead to your demise. The only thing inevitable 
about your worship is that one day it will eventually stop when your heart also ceases beating. And the farther you move towards these woods, the sooner that day approaches. But you shrug these thoughts away and continue on your journey. While you get towards the end of your, your journey, Black, you do hear these words that also break into your psyche. And they whisper how you are a failure. How you have, you were bred to be something more. And yet you're little more than a, than a purse snatching street bug. You know that to be not true, but the words still, they sting. They sting much like, even though it's been healed, you can still feel that ache in your shoulder where that creature took a nasty bite out of you earlier. And I need you to please go ahead and roll a 1v100 for me. As these terrible thoughts of your, your station in life begin creeping in and the fog draws ever closer. Aside from continuing on with disadvantage with your perception checks, any concentration that you keep, You begin babbling, incoherently, and for the next 10 minutes on the final leg of your journey before you get on to rest, you cannot stop speaking, but the words that you utter make no sense to you or to anyone listening. Jack, you have a very uneventful time during the fog. Despite oh, the fact God. that <laughs> the, the, the visions, they were, there was things that were approaching you and startling you. You could see the very creature that had informed you of that very question that has been haunting you since you met them. Food or fodder? Jack. You could see this tentacled, spidery, dual-mouthed creature rushing at you from the fog hearing its words in your ear. And it had initially startled you when you first entered, but since then, you've been able to push it away. It's not real. We are tracking this creature. It's not tracking you. You're the one hunting it. And you've been able to keep such horrible distractions from keeping you on your quest. And finally, Farrakh the Mad. You are going mad here within these, within this travel, yep. but that's not something that you're unused to. Nope. Long before the the troubles came to Tamarin, the form of this murky veil, you were always touched with a bit of... You're a curious individual, as is both the gift and curse of your namesake. And while these things that whisper, you are, you are a failure, your inventions hurt more than they help, you're odd. Nobody cares for you. You're a wanderer because wherever you go, no one wants you there. You make things worse. You hold true to the fact that that's not correct. That you know that you're meant, you're meant for more. Heck, the Titan, the Elder Smith of the Forge, helped you make the very armor that you wear now. But also, too, the echoes of that Titan's derision. How it's told you time and time again not to call upon it, to forsake your namesake that was given to you at your birth. For that is not a name that you should possess. Neither are any of the gifts that you have yours to possess. You feel like a fraud. And for that, I need you to make three wisdom saves for me, please. All right. Nice. Less nice. Oh, Ooh. really bad. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and as can you I... journey through the plains, it's getting worse and worse. What were you can I use say? arcane deflection on the second one to add plus four to it? Is, does that apply to saving throws? E... You're yes. a war mage. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Perfect. I, oh, oh, actually, also, I was going to ask, do I do, like, does Jackal, like, 
see this happening or is this like as we're all going together this is over the course of about eight hours so yes you <coughs> okay. notice it so, but everybody is trying yeah to but stay it's like close. Going, yeah, yeah every every one of you is trying to stay close together and prevent this this, this these terrible occurrences from yeah it's not like i would be able to like yeah, I wouldn't be able to like prepare to do something. It's kind of more like no, not really. Okay, this is happening over the course you. of a long period of time. I but see. good, 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 keeping a thought out there. And with that, you do pass your second saving throw. So only your final, uh, the, the last leg of this interaction. As soon as your friend Clack begins just babbling incoherently, I need you to please roll a one d hundred for me. Okay. As aside from the fog closing in, preventing you from being able to see or hear as clearly as you normally would, you are also subjected to a cold chill that runs down your spine. You don't know what from, but all around you are enemies. You can see the other creatures here in the plains, the rodents that scurry beneath your feet, the deers that linger at the edge of your vision, all of the creatures that normally would be just the fauna mm. of this region. You know that if they had the chance in your sleep, they would come and they would scratch at you and they would bore you and they would drive you from these wilds that belong to them because you do not belong here. And that frightens you to your core. Mm. And Eric, for the next four minutes, you go running, running, running and running away from the rest of your group. Everwolf, go after him. We cannot let him wander off alone. And as you take off, unless there's anything that your companions can do to try and shake you from this fear, you are just going to be picking a random direction and just running. If you could please go ahead and roll a 1d8 for me, please, to see which direction you start heading towards. I do, I do have what? something I can try. Oh, what do you got? Uh... Man, uh, I, I try to cast command from my staff and just say stop. Okay, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Eric, as your companion is attempting to stop you in your tracks. Okay. You have to beat a 17, I believe. Yeah. So. Do you have something that you can use to assist you with that, or are you fine with letting that ride? I think I'm fine with letting that ride. Okay, perfect. And as you begin running off into the night, you hear a command. Not a request, a command from your friend Jack. And you, for momentarily, you stop dead in your tracks. Now, Jackal, you know that's only going to last for about six seconds or so. Yeah. Um, and then I am Ooh, going sorry, give me to... One second. I think that we're sure. stalling in the... St okay, there we go. Looks like we're back. You're good. Please continue. Um, then I'm going to try to cast... Uh, what's it called? Is it called Mind Fortress? Something like that. Mind... Something Mind. Intellect Fortress. Um, which Ooh, gives... Intellect Fortress. Nice. Which gives uh, its concentration up to one hour. Um, and for the duration... Uh, you or one willing, it has to be a willing creature, but um, you are one willing creature you can see within range, has resi resistance to psychic damage as well as advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Okay. I don't know if that would work, but I'll try, I'll try to, I'll try to it casting it anyways. And actually, just to double check, it looks as though, uh, Platt, are you still here with us? Did we lose? Yes, I think we want to fix my camera. Oh, no problem. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure we didn't lose you. Yeah, okay, I'm still good. here. No, okay, no problem. That's perfect. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so, Jack, you're going to go ahead and cast Intellect Fortress. Can you go ahead and drop that in chat so we yeah. can... There we go. Very good. So, okay. for the duration, lasting up to one hour, you or a willing creature that you can see within range has resistance to psychic damage, as well as advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Very, very nice. At this point, I'm going to ask, Farrakh, do you believe that you'd be a willing creature? You see that the source of your fear are the very creatures of this wood that are closing in on you. Jack, a an interesting fellow that you only just met this night, is approaching you and speaking softly, attempting to 
assist you from what ails you? Do you believe that you trust them enough to accept whatever spell they wish to cast upon you to help with this? Um... Are you willing to accept whatever it is that they are going to impart upon you? If you are, I'd like you yes. to roll a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, given, given what I've sort of heard about him and the stories that he tells, yes, I would be. Okay, go ahead and roll this wisdom statement over with advantage then. As Jack, you approach Farrakh and you are able to cast your spell, the Intellect Fortress, and shaking, and you are able to only just, as the panic is continuing to set in, <clears throat> for the next hour, you feel this calm wash over you as you are... Your, your, your mental defenses are shored up, almost as if when you shore up the walls of civilizations that you seek to help. You now have this near impenetrable fortress that is keeping the bad thoughts away and returning you back to your normal senses. All the while, Clack follows your group babbling incoherently, trying to <laughs> make sense of what's happening to them. Uh Sorry, I missed. I, I, if that was to me, I missed that last one. Oh, Clack is just speaking. Clack's just okay. babbling incoherently. I'm, yes. Yep. Okay. Sorry. I'm They're just. Still I'm, with you, I'm, yeah, it's me muttering to myself. I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure. I'm going to show them. But all you hear is. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And it looks as though we've got an inspiration to Farrakh. So if you haven't added it already, Farrakh, please go ahead and give yourself an inspiration from the stream loots played by Mama Shimada. Also, if you haven't given it to yourself, you were awarded an inspiration for dressing up today, as was myself. I, I'm back. I give myself that one. Hey. Yes! Excellent! Welcome back, Achieve. I think uh, Achieve deserves an inspiration for that. Do you? Well, then yeah, you should certainly give him one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero. I have zero. I would, I would if I... If oh, I think that I have, is I have rather plenty. unfortunate. I have then. plenty. <laughs> and let me go ahead and now mark up my inspiration, of which is slowly but surely building, and I can't wait to use I'm scared. You find yourselves at the end of your long bit of travel, and only but an hour ago did the sun begin to rise. The track's easier to see, and even those of you who are having difficulty seeing in the fog, it's becoming just that bit easier, as with the coming of the sun, the deep darkness of the murky veil lightens ever so slightly, and while it's still difficult to see, it's not nearly so bad as it was. And you've now reached the edge of the Tangle Forest. Well, great job, you lot. <laughs> we made it, to be sure, to be sure. What, uh... What is it that we would like to do? Should we try to push on? Risk finding ourselves in the midst of the monsters we seek? Or should we take a rest and, and make sure that we can push on without exhausting ourselves? If we do rest, rest, it's going to be for eight hours, so we're going to be needing to play a bit of catch-up. Yeah, unless catching them is imminent, I think we should rest before we exhaust ourselves. I think yes, a few I of agree. us needs needs some rest. I'm going to point mostly towards Farrakh <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Clack, who are babbling to themselves. Yeah. I, yeah. Certainly, certainly. Tech, I can tell you this. If we pushed on but for another hour, I don't believe that we would catch them. However, if we were to push on for two hours, and we were successful, I believe we could catch these monsters very, very shortly. Do you think that you'd be able to risk exhausting yourselves before such a conflict? We believe we can triumph in such a conflict, push the break. We have exhaustion. the cardinal sin. We do we're have an to... artificial mm. boost. I'm going to we money mess it that quickly. Me message uh Farrick, um and then clack individually and i'm just going to ask how is your mind i feel as good as ever of course okay and then he'll send the same thing he'll send the same message to clack as well uh clack would respond i have been better but i've also been much much worse 
Okay. Over the course of your it's terrifying. travel, <laughs> you can see, by the way, Black, that Click has been doing well right up until you started babbling. Once you started babbling, it seems as though your bird came to rest upon your shoulder, attempting to try to help you through whatever it is that was troubling you. And then it froze, clinging to your shoulder, its claws digging in to the armor that you wear, and it has been stuck there, unmoving. So when when Clack sees that, he'll kind of pet the back and say, "Go take a rest in a safe place," and dismiss him to the pocket dimension. And as you reach up, and with as much ginger subtlety as you can, I <laughs> will and <the> bird <laughs> enters into its pocket dimension to shake off the the effects of the fog. Also known as therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, it seems as though your group is going to be bedding down for the, for the well, morning, right? Yeah, if... Yeah. That's the intention. Alright. Eber Wolf is offering to take the first watch. Now, in order to recover your group's sleep, uh, you'll need to make sure that you Make camp for a total of eight hours, but at least six of it, for those of you who do not have the trance feature, will need to be actual sleep. So for that, mm -hmm. you will need a total of at least three watches. Everwolf offers to take the first. Who will take the next two? Uh, question. Since it's daytime now, do we have the same penalty for sleeping outside as we would if it was nighttime? That is correct. Anywhere within oh. the veil. I, um... Hey, I... Farrick, um... Still feeling a little bit paranoid about all the strange creatures out here. Is going to activate his Mizium apparatus to attempt to cast a third level spell. Oh, which spell is that? Galder's Tower. Holy crap. Galder's Tower. <laughs> Where are all these spells coming from? They've even heard of that. Uh, Lost Laboratory of Qualish? <laughs> okay. If, if that's too much, I can... No, 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 no. So what is what is the mischance of this? Because I know you have to make a you have to make a check, right? Yes, I have to make a, a DC... It's twice the... Uh, it's that's 10 plus twice the level of level the spell. spell. So a DC 16. Uh, Arcana is it an Arcana check? check? Yes. All right. Let's see it. Roll. Total and party. Oh, oh no. my oh. goodness. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. Um, I have yeah. some good news, and I have some yeah. bad news. Now, bear in mind, I was, he was going to like cast this a little bit away from the party, not directly uh -huh, on top uh -huh, of uh -huh. it. No, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> cool with yeah, that. I'm cool so with that. I failed the check, so I've got to roll the, the other table. All right, please go ahead and roll the other table. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, so here's here's the thing. I this is this is one of the things that I want to remind us. Aside from the effect misfiring and summoning a seeking cloud instead of a tower, the forces of darkness, since you rolled a natural one as part of the scene, oh, activate right. a pool from the high deck. I'm gonna go ahead and oh, draw a card no. and place it in front of our party. Okay. What's the this? artifact. Oh no! <laughs> I'm scared. Clack's knife just comes alive and stabs every all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, as part of summoning this stinking cloud, give me just a moment here. We're going to look at what this excellent card is going to be doing for you and your group. Inspiration for Farrakhan's Farrak, you we move got off farther away from the group, expecting to be able to draw from your apparatus, pulling from the knowledge of those that came before you and will come after you, to draw from a mind that is not your own, a spell that you can use to help your party in this time of need. You attempt to summon an enormous tower with which to safely keep yourselves from the murky veil. Instead, you feel your as you reach out, summoning the power, 
to bring this fortress into existence. Those whispers at the edge of your of your senses and the monsters that linger at the edge of your vision. Something wraps around you. You can hear in your head food or food or father. And you feel the wet of a tentacle wrapping around your body and your spell fizzles out and instead from your hand exits this mist, almost not too dissimilar from the mist that surrounds you now, but instead of being a dark, deep mist with a light purple tint to it, it's instead this green, choking cloud that spreads out from your area, and you are currently engulfed in the stinking cloud spell. Aside from that, the cloud extends out past the 20-foot radius of what was dropped onto you, and a shockwave expands out, encompassing the entire area, slapping into and almost knocking the rest of your party to the ground. I need each one of you to please go ahead and roll a 1d20. And Eric, I need you to make a constitution save. In addition to the 1d20. In addition to the 1d20, yes. Constitution save. It's This isn't against poison, is it? Uh, this is. Are you immune to poison because of your heritage? I have resistance to poison. Resistance. That'll be with advantage then. One, two, three, four. Ends. Let me get my my good buddy here. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Just like, oh, have goody. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So the rest of you... <laughs> You feel this shockwave uh, slam into your bodies, almost knocking you to the floor. Eberwolf does actually get thrusted to the floor as the shockwave from this stinking cloud not only sends him reeling, but he looks down. And if I could go ahead and have... I think it's only fitting that it's Ferret. Ferret, I'd like you to roll a 1d10 for me, please. Okay. Six. Our guide. One, <laughs> that two. would be so tragic. Oh no! <laughs> okay. <laughs> As he stands up, you can see him looking over him, looking over his form. Oh, wow! That was <laughs> that was quite a kaboom. Well, it appears that I'm no worse for the wear, so everything should be just fine. Oh no! 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 And he looks to see that his longbow that he brought with him on this adventure begins corroding into dust and the Ooh. ironwood Ooh. bow that he brought with him in order to help you on your adventure crumbles into nothingness before all of your very eyes. No, 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 no! Oh my gosh! Oh, he looks down and reaches for the pack that he brought. Okay, okay. He finds his sword. He looks at the rest of you. Are your belongings all right? Are the rest of you fine? Gonna look at everything I have. Is is, is it okay? <laughs> as far as you can tell, the rest of you okay. <laughs> don't appear to be missing anything that has dissolved into dust. Yeah. That's good. Seems you were correct, <sighs> Farrick. This ironwood is inferior to metal. <laughs> <laughs> I told you so. A second time. Call back to group one. In this Guy, the guy's already gives <laughs> My god. I hate this fucking mist. <laughs> Didn't group one have like the same thing happen with the gem? It got the thing got yeah. disintegrated. Yeah. Group one did seem to have a very uh, a very similar issue. Really uh, yeah. Now, Eric, you did indeed make your save, so it doesn't take you much time. You do a bit of coughing, uh, but you are able to get out of the the mist that you had just summoned. Mm-hmm. Well, that was, um, Ferrick, thank you for trying, but please don't do that again. That was awful. That was Are absolutely you sure? dreadful. I could try again. I, you know, they say that the third time is the charm, but since that was the first, I say that we skip the second and just, we can just bed down for the evening like regular folk and 
not destroy the precious gift that my father gave to me before coming out to assist you all. Eric, you really have a knack for destroying things. <laughs> my mask, his bow. Entire really watchtower, that. apparently. <laughs> well then, I suppose it's a good thing we're going into the forest. Uh, as I said, I'll I'll go ahead and take the first watch. Uh, who among you will be ready to take the next two? I will take. The I can take the second. Never mind. I'll take. I'll, I'll take the third. I'll take the third. <laughs> Eberwolf, Achieve, and Jack. Very good. That would be most excellent. Um, you all go Can ahead and we'll set up camp and I'll keep an eye on us and I'll, I'll wake you when the time is right, Achieve. Could the blowfish go on watch? It's immune to exhaustion and has 16 passive perception. If you would like, certainly. I think that would work well. And I sort of imagine it's he's been it's been uh hovering sort of above and a little bit behind our party on Overwatch the whole time anyways. Yeah, I mean, the, so if you'd like, the uh, the Blowfish can stay up with everyone, but did you want it to take yes. the place of one of the other party members? Um, It's up to them, but I imagine it'll be out, up uh, keeping watch the whole night anyways. I don't see why it needs to rest itself. It, it does not, no. it's, uh, it's yeah. Well, does, does the contract say it's immune to exhaustion? It does, right? Yes, it's immune to exhaustion. Then, yeah, no, then it doesn't need to rest. No, so it can just float up, uh, keeping watch. Well, Everwolf is not going to trust that contraption, and so he <laughs> is going to go ahead and take the first watch with the, with the creature. Uh, the rest of you, as you go ahead and bed down, I need each of you to please go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, before, before we do that, mm -hmm. um, Jackal, he's going to be laying down. And then he's gonna look at his staff with the list of with the many names on it. And he's gonna think this time is gonna go differently, and he's gonna lay down, looking like he's going asleep, but he's gonna be really casting intellect fortress on everybody. Oh, kind of sleeping. Mm. Um, Very not sleeping nice. Himself, but he is gonna do that. Okay, and so uh, now so I have. I have two, I used it earlier, so I have two more uses of it, and then I can upcast it once level four. Okay, so with, now does that mean you're not going to be sleeping? Because remember, you, you'll need to make sure that- Yeah, I have sleep. to be, I, I'm not, I'm for going, I'm for going sleeping. Interesting. Okay, so when you upcast it, you're able to pick more than one individual. So who are the first yeah. two people with your upcast that are going to be receiving it? And then who's going to be receiving it after that? Uh, the first two people that will be receiving it is i'm gonna post it just so i can read what the hell yeah this is. uh okay so you can target one additional so i'll do the first two people I'll do is clack and um ferric because they got affected more it seemed like during okay. the walk then i'll do achieve and then i'll then i'll roll back to clack with the well so is as, as long as you yeah. can give this to someone um <laughs> You're going to go ahead and I'm just going to say that because it lasts for an hour and the effect starts once they've slept for at least an hour, mm -hmm. we'll just say that once you've hit someone with this, that'll be what they need for the night. So you've hit your first okay. three companions. Do you have enough spells to hit the other two or just the first three? I have. And do you want, since you're not going to regain, if you don't sleep, you're not going to regain these spell yeah, slots. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so one, two, three, four. I think I can target four people if I use okay. everything. So, so I, which four I, are you going to I can get everything. Uh, are you going to forego getting your? Oh, because you're not sleeping, so you, you can. Go yeah, so it yourself. should be every. It should be everybody, and then when Perfect. when um when our guide falls asleep, he'll get the last one. Great. All right, I would like to go ahead and have those that are sleeping. Huh? Can the three of you please roll your save with advantage? Also, just as or a reminder, uh, Eric, you also received advantage from chat for uh, <laughs> that natty one. <laughs> yes, I recorded those. Perfect. Before going to sleep. <clears throat> would ritual cast alarm around our campsite good call okay go ahead and drop that alarm and it looks as though as well let me go ahead and see here we've got quite a few inspiration and a disadvantage that have been dropped in chat let me go ahead and pull those up real quick so you said wisdom saves with advantage for sleeping wisdom saves with advantage they had some that stream loots cards that were played <laughs> let's see if i can Maddie. So we have an inspiration to Jackal, 
and a disadvantage on, on fog. fog. <laughs> 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 just the, just the fog as a, sure. as a, as a fog as an independent thank entity. You, thank you so much, uh, Shimada. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Here, so let me go ahead it and has, give... it has to roll a save against the sun, or else it this evaporates. Advantage for fog. Okay, very good. <laughs> now, uh, Mama Shimada, can you clarify? Is that disadvantage against anyone being affected by the fog, or does that mean that the fog has disadvantage when trying to affect someone else? I just want to clarify. I would assume it's the second one. <laughs> oh, there's so many disadvantages stacked up. <laughs> oh, you, ready are you to still go. burning through disadvantage? No, she, she said she has 13. She has 13 cards. cards left, two disadvantage things. Yeah. Okay, let me just make sure that I'm, I'm popping these off as we go. So that was the disadvantage, that was the inspiration. Very good. Give me just a moment to flesh out through these cards, and then we had one from Karateoki, and then another one earlier from Mama Shimada. So let's stream what's up to Karateoki. That was Ferric needed inspiration, so one more inspiration to yeah. Ferric. And then the last one was... I'm up to why am I not using Another them? one to Ferric. Okay, so that was two more inspiration to Ferric. So if you've been keeping track of it, then I'm expunging that, and you've got a lot of inspiration, Ferric, for all the... All the <laughs> evil that's been getting thrust upon you this day. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty then. So, let me go ahead and take a look in our chat and see what happened. Oh, wow! Natty, 20! That's lovely! Very, very nice. And... Looks like Clack also made an 18, so nice. That's two successes. And then Clack with a 16. Yep, alright. You all were successful in your evening's rest. And, and I only I don't have to roll because I didn't sleep, right? That That's is only correct. Okay. And then now I'm going to go ahead and roll for Everwolf. He will also have advantage on this for his wisdom save. And he also natties. So very good. Over the course of each of you uh, stepping up and taking your watch, especially with the assistance of the Blowfish, you there's a lot of, uh, of creatures that are lingering at the edge of your camp. Uh, it seems as though there are a collection of wolves that has been following you for some time. But with the arrival of that stinking fog uh, that was summoned by Farrakh, as well as all of you seeming to set up a perimeter and defending yourselves from any possible threats, they are still tracking you, but don't appear to have made a move as of yet. Dark dreams visit each and every one of you, and though you experience visions that would startle you, it doesn't reach into your core and drive you any further towards possible insanity that awaits you at the edge of this quest. And over the next eight hours, you are able to benefit from the effects of a long rest. Everyone except for Jack. Now, Jack, I want to remind you, not only did you not sleep during the night so you do not regain your spell slots, you also need to, because it's been 24 hours, you need to make a constitution saving throw against exhaustion. So uh, just to go ahead and save for me. Oh, yeah. Failure. So that is one. Oh, I, I did get one inspiration. Did I get yes, one inspiration? Did. Can I use it? Okay. Yes, you can. Nice. This seems like a good use. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and mark down your character sheet. You are suffering from one level of exhaustion. Okay. Now, I also yeah. want to remind you that as you make your way through these woods, for every hour of travel that you spend, you are going to be pushing on since you've already traveled for eight hours and you have not had a chance to rest and reset yourself for the day. So you are going to have to continue pushing on every hour, making a constitution saving throw against exhaustion. So you'll That's need fine. to steal yourself or you'll need to get assistance from your party and effectively be dragged and taken as, as cargo instead of making your way through these woods yourself. Jack, are you sharing with your party that you had stayed up and helped them through no. the night avoid the... He, he, he pretended like he was sleeping the whole time. He pretended like he was sleeping. Okay, I need you to go ahead mm -hmm. and make a deception check for me. And each of you who took a member of the watch, so that would be Achieve, and... Was that... Oh, and then Jack. So just Achieve. Achieve, please go ahead and make an insight check to see if you had noticed. Uh, um, I rolled a 2, but it's actually a 22. Just oh my 
because because uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter unless I get a net twenty. It doesn't matter because I'm because I'm yeah, it's it's busted, broken. But, <laughs> but that's, and that's the thing I can do. Okay. Okay. Everwolf was asleep. He was not getting a chance to to see if you were faking it. So. Oh wait, that's not it. It's... Wow. Okay, yeah, you. I mean, you played it excellently. You know, you you slept through the night. And when the rest of you wake up the following day, you make your way into the woods, unpacking your camp and pushing your way into the dark woods. As we make our way through, you're following the trail, and Eberwolf is still very confident that you won't have any issues with following this trail since you moved very quickly, slept only as long as you had to, and then continued to move on. He indicates that you've lost a bit of time, of course, since you slept, but these creatures likely would have had to have taken a break as well. And now you have the daylight, which does not does not break past the canopy of this forest too much, but it is better to track in the day than it is at night. And he believes that by the end of this day, you should be able, unless anything stops you from being able to catch up with what you seek, you'll be able to find your quarry. At this point, we're going to be entering into a skill challenge. I am going to need each of you in order to make your way through this. We're looking at your party catching the fleeing horde of monsters and trying to save the captured people that they have taken. You'll need three successes in order to be successful during the skill challenge. And if you get three failures, then you are going to fail this skill challenge. If you succeed, it's very likely that you'll be able to track down this horde of monsters. And if you fail, it's very likely that you will lose the trail entirely. First, complication that you're going to be experiencing as you move through these woods is the murky veil itself. Perception of the fog moves in and makes it difficult for you to be able to see. I need somebody to act as the active player and attempt to make your way through the fog. One of you will need to step up and attempt to assist your group in making your way through this difficult to see fog. There is a section of canopy that makes it very difficult to see through this section of the woods that you're going and it's almost as if it is night. You can barely see where you're going, and it's going to be very difficult to make it through this section of the woods. Who among you is going to step up and get your group through this? You said there was a dense section of canopy? Uh, yes, it's a very, very see? dense section of canopy where the light is barely able to get through to you. I'll put up a, a light can chip to help. I'll have that going. But... So you're gonna you're gonna step up and be the one who is the I'll... active. I don't know if I should be the one who does it. I'll contribute. <laughs> I'll contribute. Remember, you're, you're, you're the, when you're the active PC, you're the one who is taking charge in the scene. So it's only oh, you who's, who's okay. gonna be at this part. Mm, There's gonna be multiple instances idea. where each one of you will have to take points in this. So if you think this is your chance, you can certainly move forward and help the party get through this section. <laughs> Much better than my idea. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll do it. Yeah, sure, I'll do it. All I'll right, use perfect. the light cantrip and try to try to guide people through. Very good. And as you step up, you are continually casting the light cantrip, attempting to make it easier for your group to make it through this particularly dark stretch of wood. I need you to please make a check for me. Let me go ahead and that's going to be an arcana check. Now I have the DC set based off of the leg of the trip that you're in, and. Let's see yeah, I believe that this is disadvantage. Things. This is disadvantage, right? Oh, do you have do you have disadvantage right now? Because of exhaustion, I believe. Oh, oh that's right. That's why I didn't exhaustion. want. That's why I didn't want it. That's why I didn't want it. Oh. That's right. The festival oh. exhaustion. Right. Okay, let's do it. Um, Maybe it'll now, go fine. Here's Hold the on. thing. What I will say is your your what you're doing right now. This course of action is definitely effective. Um, so I am going to lower the DC slightly as your light spell is going to be a perfect thing in order to make your way through this. Now, that being said, you are using a cantrip in order to help you make your way through this. So it's also going to give you a plus two to your roll. So even though you're going to be rolling with disadvantage, the DC and your modifier have been affected accordingly. So please go ahead and make an arcana check with disadvantage. I would like to remove the disadvantage with restore balance. <laughs> now, remember, you are uh, the... The way that we're doing this is because there's an active PC. Nobody is able to assist the active PC during the course of their okay. uh, skill okay. challenge. Okay. All right. Let's do this. 
Oh, that would have been so good. <laughs> right, a nine. Is there anything that you can do in order to modify or change that? Remember, that's plus two, so that's an 11. Um, I, I mean, I could bardically inspire myself. Well, I don't know. Can, can I do that? Is yes, that even like a thing I'm nope. allowed to do? Oh, oh you yeah, can inspire then. yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> you got this, Jacqueline. Let's see. That's uh, that I you add do. it. So I roll a, I add the D8, right? That is correct. Go ahead and roll one D8 and add it to your check. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> a one that is um that is unfortunate now this is going to be the first failure among this among this skill oh, challenge tragic. jack you are you are bringing the light to bear however this fog is moving in and making it very difficult for you to see and the distractions caused by the beings at the edge of your at the edge of your sanity and also your own You've stayed up all night assisting your party. They are in very good shape, but you, you're tired. You're beyond tired. This has been an incredibly difficult. You've gotten a bar fight just last evening. You were put into a correctional facility, attacked by a monster, saved people, were almost devoured by a beast, and have now been making your way out into the fog. And it was just a day ago that you had arrived in this place. It's It's been a long day. And unfortunately... As part of this failure, you and the entire party is subjected to the effects of the murky veil. And for the remainder of this skill challenge, everyone will be making their skill checks with disadvantage. As oh, the oh, fog oh. moves in deep and dark, almost clinging to your <clears throat> as a bad, very, very bad <laughs> trail makes its way along where you travel. As you continue on with this dark fog moving ever oh, closer, damn, I, I, it's, it's too late. Shit. Oh, what's up? No, what, what do you? No, I just, I just noticed, I just noticed something, but well, I don't think, it, I don't think it actually, it doesn't actually matter. No, I re, I reread it. Oh, that is, okay. I have unfailing inspiration. Uh -huh. That just means I keep, I keep the inspiration. So like, you do keep it, yeah. Since you failed, you but it doesn't not... mean like I can just like re-roll it until it succeeds. That's not that how is that, that is correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that would be busted. <laughs> that would be extremely busted. I thought about it for like half a second, and then I was like, that doesn't make sense. And as you continue through the woods, that pack of wolves that had been tracking you earlier in the plains, now that you have been surrounded by this fog that grows ever dark as you move through these woods, they appear to have grown braver and not just lingering at the edge of your vision. As they get closer, you see that these malformed pack of wild dogs and wolves have boils and extra claws, and even some of them have an additional head coming out of the side of their shoulder. They are salivating and approaching you quickly. I need one of you to step up and drive these dogs away during the portion of the skill challenge. Who will step forward? Farrick will uh, walk into the middle of the pack. All right, or Just walk up to them. What have you got to stop this pack of dogs from ripping away at you and your party? I have 22 AC. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna face tag it until like, I'm until going to let them eat me. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I have oh so many spells that I can use to against these guys. Um, let's go with web. Ooh, excellent. Yes, this is a rather large pack oh, of monsters. Now, just remember, uh, with this web spell, uh, this is going to be... Let me find this here. Because normally you would be making this check with disadvantage due to the fog clinging around you, because you are mm -hmm. using a low-level spell of great effect, you're going to be rolling with advantage. So that cancels out, and I'd like you to make an arcana check for me. Okay. As you so are with, attempting. With advantage, you said? or Well, no, because you just, get disadvantage oh, just all your rolls. Yeah, it cancels it out, yeah. Okay, so normal arcana roll. Yes. But because you're using the because you're using the web, which would stop them in their place, I am lowering mm -hmm. the DC a bit as part of it. Okay. 16. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and as you summon the web, you can see that a few of the wild dogs are able to dodge away from this very big pack. You catch the great amount of the pack in it, but a few of them that are left 
charge forward, rushing at you, and they pounce upon you and start digging into you with their claws and their teeth, but your armor prevents them from making any kind of progress. The rest of your party hurries over, and since there are many of you and just a couple of dogs, they rush back into the forest. The other is still trapped by the web, and you are able to make your way further and deeper into the Tankville Forest. This is your first success. Well done. Okay. As you continue on, you hear something. Not just the echo of these intrusive thoughts that are burrowing into your mind, there are people in the fog making their way to you. And as you draw closer, you realize they are babbling incoherently. These are people no more. These are, these are beings that have succumbed to whatever terrible power the monsters within the fog are able to bring to bear. And you see before you a group of not quite dregs, but not quite normal people. As you can see... They have purple, blistering skin, additional eyes, and tentacles and claws instead of arms. They are making their way to you, and they don't appear hostile in the sense that they're trying to hurt you. They appear that these creatures have gone mad. They are babbling incoherently, much like uh, your friend had done earlier the previous evening. And they're, they're babbling is reaching into your mind, attempting to drive you as mad as they are. I need one of you to step forward and take care of whatever you can to drive these people away or shield your allies from their maddening whispers. Or just kill them. <laughs> yeah. A chief will step forward and... Um... No, he'll just go for a good old-fashioned fireball right in the middle of them. Okay, fireball, great. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Uh, normally, because of the failure earlier, uh, you roll with disadvantage, but because you're using a low-level spell, you're going to roll with advantage, so that cancels each other out. And uh, because these are very flammable people, this is a very good use of being able to stop them. So yes, I'm going to lower the DC. Go ahead and make a standard arcana check as part of the casting of your fireball to see if you catch enough of them within to stop there. I would like to cash in inspiration. Answers. Go ahead and roll. Use one of your inspiration. And oh, with a 15, you you summon all of the power within you, knowing that the machine prints, the echelon clock guides you, and every action that you make has already been pre-described. It will happen. Everything that you seek to do, whether it is successful or not, is all a part of a greater whole. And as you summon your fireball, you launch it forward into the, into the creatures. It blows up amongst their ranks, but it only thins them ever so slightly. And you feel that, oh no, this must be something we have to go through. We will have to suffer through the maddening call of these creatures. It's only then when the creatures are crushed beneath a tree that you realize your fireball not only smothered out a few of their lives, but burned away one of the nearby trees that had already been weakened, and it just slams into killing the rest of them. It was all a part of the design. <laughs> as it was designed. And that is your second success of the evening. Only one more will be required to succeed in this venture, but if you get two more, Something dreadful is going to happen to your party. Clack. As the rest of you are pushing through these woods, drawing ever closer towards your goal, you realize that from all points around you, you've entered into a clearing in the woods. A clearing where the darkness that has been shrouding you is still clinging to you, still taking hold. But with the extra light that you've been given, you are able to see that there are elemental creatures that are just lingering closer and closer, making their way from the darkness toward your very party. And you can see what once was little wisps of light as they draw closer. They grow angry, bitter at your presence, and erupt into roaring flames. Not little motes of lights, but pillars of fire surround your entire party. It is up to you 
to make it through this next portion of your challenge? What will you do? Is the fire created from a spell, or are they channeling energy? Do you have Arcana? I... You are a an Arcane Trickster. Even, yes. if you don't, even if you're not proficient, go ahead and make an Arcana check for me. Yeah, that was black. A 12. Try black. You are... Not exactly certain, but you believe that since these creatures themselves are, they're magical in nature, but you don't believe this is a spell. You believe this is probably part of them, but honestly, it's it's difficult to tell, considering you don't have a whole lot of experience with elemental creatures. So, in... <clears throat> in that case... What Clack will do is just a show of strength. He'll expend a charge from the fang and then lunge at one of the elementals. Well, Excellent. No, he'll just... Yeah, yeah. Are you expending this charge to get an additional attack, or are you trying to attempt to hit them with the paralyzing ray? Um, that would be better. Also, remind me, did you only spend one charge the previous day on your... Yes. Then that charge refreshed when you took your long rest. Yes, I refreshed it. Very good. Um, he's probably... He's going to go for just a paralysis because he, he doesn't want... He doesn't want to fight yet. If it comes to blows, we'll win, especially if one of them starts paralyzed. And if one of their compatriots get paralyzed, he thinks... They will be less enthused to try and extinguish our, our flames. Okay, so you are going to be attempting to utilize your dagger in order to paralyze them. Go ahead and expend a charge, and I'm going to go ahead and make a saving throw for the creature. And... I'm just going to come out and say it. Uh, elementals are immune to paralyzation, so even if it fails at save, it is not able to be paralyzed since it does not have the physiology to allow the dagger to take hold on it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean this is a failure. What that means is that as part of the show of strength, you were unsuccessful in your attempt to cow them with paralyzing one of their own. So I need you to roll this with disadvantage. Now, because you already have disadvantage... Oh, one second. Apparently, I gotta stop drinking water on stream because it's not working out for me. <laughs> You're gonna go ahead and take a negative two to your roll. I would like you to make for me an intimidation check as you are displaying this show of strength. Not only were you trying to paralyze them, but when that was ineffective, you brought your dagger to bear and slashed into the creatures, showing them just how powerful you are. And even if this effect that would normally bring them low is not effective, you have a magic dagger, and you hit hard. So please roll a intimidation check with disadvantage. And minus two. So, as oh. a natural one, is the thing. Oh, no. Oh, ah. no. <sighs> <sighs> okay, so here's the is thing. A, is that a little high deck? Do you, uh, that well, it's a, that's the thing. This is a different scene. I can only pull one per scene, and this is a different scene. So, okay. Do oh, no. Do you want to let that one ride? Do you have any inspiration or anything you'd like to do to... The best you could do if you use inspiration is take the five. It's not going to let you succeed on the roll. I don't have any inspiration. You don't have any inspiration. <laughs> no. Well, then, uh, my friend, I would like to go that, ahead that's and... That's uh, just a one. <laughs> that's just a one. That one looks terrible. That's just a one. <laughs> Oh my god, that was like, awful. So here's the thing that happens. Um, as you are attempting to... Oh, oh, no. As you are attempting to paralyze this fire elemental with the Fang of Zethus, and it does not work, you move up 
and drag Dan and just stick your dagger directly into its form, burning your forearm as you do, as even touching these creatures causes you pain. We'll resolve that in a moment. <laughs> However, as part of this, a creeping cold washes into your limbs as the fire burns your forearm. It is so hot that you no longer feel heat. It feels cold instead, almost as if the heat is drawing your very life force into it. It is a struggle for you to even stand after you've stabbed this creature. However, it's not just you. As if there was a sympathetic connection connecting you to your party, every single member in your party feels that same intense burn and that sapping of energy. Each one of you has your speed halved until you are able to find rest and respite. Wait, but we have my so if I reach exhaustion two, that means my speed is gonna go to zero two, now. Well, oh, no, it'll, it'll be no. a quarter. It won't, it won't be. It won't be. It'll okay, be halved, okay. and then it'll be halved again. Okay, it's not like halved off like your max. It's halved correct, off the current. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now here's the thing. Um, that, that was so a weird. that was a failure, unfortunately. So. I'm going to go ahead and roll <laughs> some fire damage here. Clack, you take nine points of fire damage as you <laughs> dove your hand into this elemental. Also, each member of the party sympathetically feels that effect. <laughs> and I need everybody to please go ahead and roll a 1d6. Oh no! This is maybe fire it's damage. Not, maybe it's not. This is also you damage. as well, by the way, Clack. This is oh, fire I have to roll again. Yes, a one d six. Now, oh, and let me go ahead and roll for uh, for Everwolf. Let's go, Everwolf. All right, for each member, for each die that you rolled. Please roll that number of d10s, and that's how many fire damage you take. As each one of you feels the very life force drawn from your body out through your forearm, and each one of you feels as if your very soul is becoming burned. Oh, Wait, oh okay. no! I didn't. But okay. I'm resistant to fire damage, so I'm a tiefling. That is correct. Oh. You are resistant to fire damage. That's a good. That's good. That's a good D10. thing. So that's. 14. 14. That is also 14. I'll take 10 more. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. And uh, just oh, so what we have I done? easily see what we're doing. Oh, yeah, you guys have your character sheets. Perfect. You, you guys are all fine. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, after that, the elementals begin closing in on you, and it's all you can do to flee from the scene. Hobbled as you are and surrounded by the fog, you use the fog almost as if to your advantage, since <laughs> these creatures are not of the fog, but within it and you were able to escape and abscond from the situation. Now, uh, here's the thing. You have now succeeded twice and failed twice. That means the last leg of your adventure has come to a close. The veil that has been clinging to you this entire journey now draws in, inducing madness with each and every one of you. I need one of you to step forward as the mist forms into a large and immense looking beast very similar to the monster that you had fought back at the city of ironwood the creature that asked you if you were food or if you were fodder a shadow of it forms before you one of you must step forward and banish this apparition who among you will brave the madness of the murky veil and the personification of Achieve will step forward and face this beast. All right, Achieve. You, you have a shadow you. of the of the vestige of hunger that it asked you if you would be food or fodder, and it asks you again. Food or fodder. What will you do? This is a, like this is a figure coalesced out of the mist, so he's 
this is still a skill challenge, right? Like we can't assist. We can't assist on yeah. this. Correct. Okay. I mean, effectively, you are assisting, but it's so dire. But yeah, like we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Just thematically. Yeah. 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 Oh, is this the, is this thing a physical threat to us, or is it just the madness that comes with it? Go ahead and make. Or do we not know? An insight check or a perception will get you different information based off what you roll. Uh, I am much better at one of those than the other. Not very good at them, though. Would you like uh, to do anything to modify that? You, you, did, uh, you did just get an inspiration. Yeah, I'll use the inspiration. Also, inspiration. wait, before, you, before <laughs> you do that. No, no, that's fine. No, no, I'm going to let it ride. Go ahead. That's not much better. Nah. Oh, we are not having a good time. Before we continue, I'm, I'm, I'm going to catch up with some of the things we have here. We had inspiration to achieve. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off. Mama Shimada gave yep. you inspiration, so please take yeah. that. Also, Clack, yep. unless you didn't add it before, you also got an inspiration. Yeah, I, I added that after. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, you got two, you got two, I think. Oh, good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here's working. another one. So please, if you didn't already do it, Mama Shimada gave you one. Or no, Mama Shimada gave you one, and then somebody else said one. Uh, LaFon gave you. There we go. That's it, LaFon. Thank you very much, by the way, Chad, for interceding on behalf of our party. Okay, so as you as you are taking stock of the situation, you realize that this creature is moving ever closer and expanding, growing to greater and greater heights. First, being about the same. 10 to 12 foot large looming figure it was before and as you are trying to take in exactly what this creature is it looms closer and larger growing to 20 feet 30 it's as large as the canopy surrounding you almost as if this creature is wrapping around panoramically encompassing your entire party now what i will say is that i remember that uh we had a disadvantage that was given to the fog so what i will say is I'm going to go ahead and give you one more chance to discern what is happening here. Please make one more perception check, as your insight was not successful, but I will just give you a straight perception check to see if you can see through what is happening here. With a 15, 15 you are able to discern it could be a physical threat as well as mental, but you are able to discern it is not a physical form. You can see right through it. So if this thing is... A physical being that could hurt you then it is likely a ghost which you think is possibly unlikely so while you don't have direct conf confirmation you believe that this is likely going to be a test of will rather than of strength then i will use my twin spell feature to twin cast protection from good and evil on myself and on clack Protection from good and evil on yourself. Against on aberrations. Yes. All right. So as you cast protection from good and evil to help against this, this is a low-level spell, and so you are going to be making this check with advantage. Now, because you have disadvantage in all of your checks during these scenes, this is going to be made normally. So I need you to make one arcana check against this creature. Can I use that ability I keep trying to use? Where is it? Um, restore balance to get rid of the disadvantage. Yes, you can. Is this a... You can use that number? Yep. Okay, so the you can class use it. Feature. Once, uh, you can use the one feature that you have. It balances out, and then yes, now that you've cast the spell, you can make this check with advantage. So, Arcana check? Arcana with advantage. Alright. Arcana with advantage. 19! A 19, and as if the course of this event was already planned, and you were merely following through with what you knew to be the outcome. Praise this creature. the design. What's that? Praise the design. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it is inexorable. And as the image of the vestige of hunger descends upon your party, you realize that it can't actually hurt you. You all realize this. It is just a figment of your imagination. And with your final success, you are able to make it through. And as the fog that has been claiming your party and shrouding you in darkness over the course of this travel disperses. I need two things. First of all, I need Jack to make five constitution saving throws over the last five hours of travel that you have been making. 
I'll I'll remind okay. you, Jack, you have one level of exhaustion, and if you get six levels of exhaustion, yeah, you die yeah. out. Yeah, it's bad. The, is this like, are, the, are these at disadvantage, or are these at like. No, no, no. This away? is just normal. Okay. No, no. Normal con save. Normal con save. Okay. That'll be fine, for sure. Just don't fail fine. all of them. Oh, wait. Sorry. I had disadvantage on. Apologies. Oh, uh, 13. That's dexterity. What am I doing? I'm so sorry. I'm panicking. We're going to keep the first one. So that's going to that'll be a yeah. 13. <laughs> dexterity. So dexterity would have been a six or it would have been a. We're, we're, no, we're it would have been a seven for we're me. Gonna, no, 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 no. We're not going to count that. Uh, so we're the wrong one. So it was. Hey, a, I got a seven. Anyways. <laughs> All right. There we go. Success. Oh, wait a minute. No, nice. this is the third one. So it starts off the first one you made. That was mm -hmm. at 11. Or that was at 10. Then this one, the 13, that was at a DC of 11. Then the next one you made is a DC of 14. The next one is a DC of 15. Oh. So that 10 is not going to succeed. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm at quarter speed right now. This one is going to be a DC of 16. <laughs> There's no way I make it. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. A 20. Okay, well, that's <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three, four. <laughs> you need one more. This will be a DC of 17, and this is your last okay. save at this time. Yes. Wow. Okay. That so went, you had failed once, twice. <laughs> you have a total of three levels of exhaustion. Right now, you have disadvantage in all ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws. So for all intents and purposes, all D20 rolls are made with disadvantage, and your speed is half. Yeah. It's actually quartered because of the effect until you're able yeah. to stop and get a rest. So at Which, this point, so that's, that's you're like making everything with disadvantage. Zero <laughs> you're moving at a quarter speed. Well, no, so basically you have a 30 movement speed that goes down to 15, that goes down to 5, because there's no such thing as a 6. <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> so as you as you all shrug away this effect, as you're moving through, you realize that Jack was just keeping strong during the entirety of this travel. And as you are making your way through this fog and opening to the next clearing where you can gather yourselves, Jack practically collapses before the rest of you. You can see that considering... The harrowing experience you had, it was very difficult for all of you, but he appears exhausted. Literally half dead. Everyone um, steps forward. Oh my goodness. Jack, are you alright? Yeah, I'm 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 fine. You're obviously not fine, certainly. What 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 befalls you, friend? Uh, just, just tired, I think. Tired, but we, we rested before we got here. We all took a nap. We were able to catch some Z's. There must be more yeah, to you... it than this. Please, and he looks to the rest of you. Is anyone here able to cure him of whatever it is that ails him? I'm, I'm not. A, you, you all have been bringing so many magics to bear. I, I merely am uh, a tracker, useful in finding what we're looking for. I have aid and cure wounds, but none of those like in the description directly address exhaustion or anything like this. Yeah, I have lesser restoration, but it also doesn't say it does that. What would happen if I like took the sender sender the cardinal sin? Like, would <laughs> well, what would happen? I feel like when that wears sin, off, it would mean that for the next hour, you no longer make your ability check disadvantage, and then when that hour is over, you gain another level of exhaustion, <laughs> which would bring that it to is... four. That's a terrible idea. Never That's a terrible idea. That. <laughs> okay. Is taking a short rest prevent him from getting more exhaustion? It will not heal your exhaustion. You have to take a long. But will rest. it prevent? But will it prevent him from accruing more? Correct. If he takes yeah, short a, short, rest. a short rest, won't. Uh, won't cause any further issues. Oh, I mean, like, after after he gets up in the short rest, will he be still making, every hour after that, will he still make rolls for exhaustion? Yes, as long as you continue traveling, for every hour that you continue traveling from this point, you'll be making additional saves against exhaustion. You are about to pass out. You will need to ensure that you sit down and take some form of rest, Jack, or else you are going to be very quickly uh, walking yourself into an early grave. I think Farrick can, like, at least help support him. Just, like, hold him, take some of, like, his, the physical load off of moving. But 
that's about it. How many hours have we been traveling? Five so far today, six? five. Uh, speaking of uh, so far, hello there, Raiders. Welcome to Caches and Castles. Uh, currently, oh, we are playing uh, Curse of Tamarin, which is an actual play for our community of supporters that have been helping our channel grow uh, slowly but surely over the last number of years. And we find ourselves uh, currently in a wood surrounded by a dark fog that is slowly driving our players mad. They are attempting to track down a group of monsters that have captured numerous individuals from the city of Coldheart. And as they are making their way through these woods, one of their companions at the... For lack of a better term, they have thrown themselves uh, upon the sword to help their allies, and now they are slowly but surely succumbing to exhaustion as they push on throughout this wood. Mm. We join them at the next clearing, where the trees have opened up slightly, allowing them um, some level of sight. However, the fog still grows near, and Eberwolf, your Ironwood Warden, assures you the monsters that we're tracking must be just over that next bend. We are very, very close. I believe if we were able to push on, we would be able to catch up with them and possibly stop them from being able to go wherever it is that they're going to be taking these people. Jack, can, we, can you can push on? Do you think hour? you'll be able to continue, or must we rest here and give you a chance to... Can we catch them in the next hour? I believe we can, I can... yes. I have a solution. And a chief will produce a very ornate stone and metal lockbox with gem encrusted and begin to cast, and he will cast summon construct. And I'll summon a metal construct to carry Jackal. Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> and what does this metal construct look like as you cast this spell and you summon up this construct from wherever you're bringing it from? It is a large, imposing um, frame with no proper coverings over all the gears and the mechanisms worrying inside, just a completely exposed uh, body of machinery. Nice. Just many, many spinning gears. So a, a metal clockwork construct. Yes. Very good. And with the abilities that it has before you here, and with plenty of strength, Achieve summons the clockwork construct, and with the direction has been given the well the being made of made of clocks and gears and whirring and ticking approaches you jack kneeling down before you and holding out its arms are you going to hop forward oh. thank you achieve and i'll uh he'll climb he'll climb he'll climb yeah he'll climb on Taking you into its strong but not entirely comfortable frame, the construct easily hefts you and is holding you aloft. Uh, you are still able to utilize any of your actions that you have while you are being carried. Uh, you are just effectively not able to move unless you jump off and away from this creature. You're not grabbing; yeah, it's not yeah. keeping you from moving. Uh, but I'm just I'm at the will I'm at the will of it like, exactly, oh, and because right. you're being yeah, carried, uh, you are not going to be suffering any uh, any issues from the next leg of travel. This and construct with comes with seat warmers. <laughs> <laughs> it has and heat body ability. Despite the cold chill <laughs> that is blowing through the dark wood of the Tangle Forest, uh, all of you bring your cloaks in and are keeping yourselves as warm as you can be. But Jack, uh, with the warmed robot that is carrying into these woods, feels rather comfortable, actually. Riding in style, as it were. And unfortunately, Raiders, uh, you have come near the end of our stream. We've been playing for a number of hours now. Uh, so at, at this leg of our, of our journey, we're going to be wrapping up for this session. But before we do... I want to share that Mama Shimada had drawn from the common deck. So let me go ahead and pull that for you. This is going to be going, I believe, Mama Shimada said that it was for binary. So I'm going to go ahead and draw from nice. the common deck. And binary, you have drawn the hooded one. Ooh. 
Okay. This is the Seven of Swords. Okay. And let me go ahead and drop in the chat here what this is going to do for you. This is the blade that strikes deepest in those who cannot see it coming. When you make an attack roll, this can be a spell or any sort of weapon attack, the target is blinded until the start of your next turn. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Okay. So remember, you can only have one of these cards on your person at per time, so go ahead and add to your character that you have the hooded one that is watching over you as a boon from beyond. One of the uh, resolved spirits or elemental titans is watching over your group and is ready to intercede on your behalf. You can invoke this power, but while you have this card in your possession, you will not be able to benefit from any of the other cards that could be given to you or any cards that you will get by rolling a natural 20. So just make sure that if you do hold on to this, just know that this is taking the place of any other card you could possibly have. Keep that in mind. All right. And as thank you, you push on much. for the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just was saying thank you. Oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> and as you push on for the final leg of this adventure, you cross over a small hillock, looking over into the dense forest beyond, and you can see that there is a small group of creatures that apparently has lied in wait for you. And you can see that numerous hooked horrors are attempting to lie in wait in an ambush on these forest paths. And you realize that these creatures realized that you are coming and sent a small contingent to try to hold you off from the main force. If you would be able to push through, defeat these creatures, and press on, you would be able to catch up with the main force. But if these creatures were able to stop you in your tracks, it would be very difficult to continue on with your mission to save the people from the clutches of the vestige of horror and kill the creature, bringing its head back, saving the people of Coldart from any further attacks from the Tangil Forest and stopping the curse of Tamron. I thank you all for joining us this evening. Please return next week at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as we will join the Coldheart convicts as they push their way through the Tangle Forest in order to save the people of the Kingdom of Coldheart. Thank you all very much, and have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.